Hello, one and all, welcome to the ATK Wrestling Show and our all in reactions and review. Yeah. It's alright, wasn't it? It was, it was good, yeah. It was alright. Um <laughs> that was a, a British overreaction, I do apologize. <laughs> let's I mean let's dive in, shall we? Indeed, uh, indeed. We kicked off the show with uh, Aussie Open defending the Ring of Honor Championships against mm. Better Than You Bay Bay. Now, I can't remember what I predicted, but were you expecting the win? Yes. Yes, yes I was. Yes, I predicted the win. Yes, yeah, spoilers. Um, um, <laughs> I mean, I was wrong in what I thought was going to happen in the main event, though. So hmm. you kept me guessing hmm. there. But um, yeah, I thought it was going to add more drama and intensity to the main event because now they've just become tag champions as well. Yeah. So you're like, ooh, what's actually going to happen? Um, but yeah, I thought it was it was awesome. And I think a lot of people, I think MJF was asked this in the media scrum as well. It was like, do you think you're going to lose some of the, the pop or the buzz because they will have already seen you first and then you're the main event? I said, well, we've already seen them guys. And that didn't, that wasn't the case, was it? No. To be honest. Um, nope. I think, have we ever had this before? Where they do like the opening show and, because it wasn't even like all in, was it? It was like the pre show thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was zero. So it was like, yeah. Thank you. Um, so it was like, they did, have we ever had somebody do the pre show and the main event? I don't think so. But I do think it was very fitting that MJF was in the, the, the opening match when he was for the original all in. As yeah, well. and it's like, I like that's, that. yeah, yeah, I never thought that's quite nice. Um, poetic, if you will. Did, did you like the kangaroo kick? I love the fucking kangaroo kick, <laughs> double close line, the kangaroo kick, two most open moves in red. <laughs> um, but no, I loved it, thought it was a great way to kick off the show. Um, got me very hyped, and the fact it was on YouTube and stuff as well. I think it, you know, it might have even made people go, oh, I'm gonna buy the pay per view, yeah. So, and that's the thing, that's where sometimes it's worth investing in the because people tend to use the, the pre shows to like let some lesser known wrestlers be seen and stuff which isn't necessarily a bad thing but it's selling points isn't it, if people haven't already bought the pay-per-view so yeah. it, probably a really good move in that sense absolutely and mm -hmm. um, we followed this up with um, the FTW championship on the line crash, car crash TV <laughs> it was car crash TV <laughs> <'Cause there's> a... <laughs> anyway. in more ways than one um, but yeah Jack Perry defended against Hook um, and yeah this caused a bit of controversy didn't it it certainly did but let's walk away from the politics of it all and the backstage bullshit like I think it was the right decision yeah. but I'm not really sure what they're trying to do with Jack Perry at this point I was I was flip flopping on the outcome of this to be fair because until um, he was at the other thing was like, I'm going to retire the belt and he didn't I was like well yeah this doesn't make any sense like if, if Perry wins then why would he keep the belt anyway you yeah. know what I mean so I was like it's hooks you have to get it back yeah. otherwise it'll be, it'll be gone I think um Perry's edginess just I, I can't it's it, it, it's it's I'm not selling it's not buying it no why did he rock up in a limo like he was JBL and then come out dressed like he was John Moxley I don't understand what his whole vibe is meant to be right now no I do want to say as well with us calling Perry that if Kevin Owens ever decides to go to AEW they need to do Kevin and Perry that's <laughs> tag team um, you don't Perry feel like he's like he's going for like badass but he's the kind of badass who'd be like you. stood on the grass next to a keep off the grass sign kind of badass you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> the worst kind. I feel like we could make a series of memes of just badass Jack Perry doing just the most mediocre badass things. Yeah, it's it's not great, is it? Um, he's he like stone cold light, isn't he? <laughs> he needed to move away from the Jungle Boy stuff, so I kind of get it. But I yeah, don't... but who looked at him and thought badass? Yeah, that's what we'll do. But that's it's not working, is it? That's good. Like the the end. Lukewarm Jack work. Perry is what we got. The fact he's like he's meant to be like. Well, well, my dad was famous, so then I'm like Mr. Hollywood. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, it should work, but it's not. What is it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. I suppose he's kind of selling it because he's got that unlikable arrogance to him, character wise. Character wise. Um, but just to clarify, I don't know. It just does. It just doesn't feel convincing, and I don't know what it is. Yeah, me neither. Um, well, Hook wins. FTW champ. Yeah, which I think was the right decision. Well, there's still a thing. I don't know what they're going to do with Jack now, but I think that was the right decision. Yeah, I didn't put it on here as well because it wasn't originally listed as a match, but we did get um, Jeff Jarrett coming out, and then it was... Um, I thought you'd leave that out anyway. But yeah, but Paul White, um, <laughs> well, Anthony yeah. Gogo, and Grado was there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Grado was there. So, fair play that he followed up with that. But, um, yeah, not not good enough for me to put in, all right? Um, you know, because it had Jeff Jarrett, didn't <laughs> you? Like, no. Nah. 
We then moved on to the opening match of the main card, and surprisingly, it was CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. Um, and you know, second time in one night for CM Punk mm-hmm. in having a fight as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know what? Really strong opening match. Um, these two have got all, like the so, chemistry these two have got together is fantastic. Yeah, and to think like they've, they've been in Ring of, Ring of Honor loads of times and all that stuff, but when they were telling me the stats of like they've only faced each other a handful of times. And it's always been Joe that got the win. Mm. So the fact that Collision, he won with a, like a sneaky roll-up, it was like it was nice to see him actually defeat Joe. So then the record's yeah. now like two wins for Joe, two wins for Punk, and one draw. So right. it's like, it's the very uh, even. That's one I've done yet. Um, but I even loved all the, like, just the, the back and forth between them. Like, um, when he went to dive through, I think dive over or through the ropes, and Joe walked away from it, and it was like, <laughs> Yeah, and stuff like that, and he's like, yeah. So that's sorry, for those listening, he, he called him a wanker. Yeah, um, Joe, Joe was great with the crowd. To be fair, yeah. he was really playing into it. Yeah, and um, I I liked it. I don't know why people got so uppity about it, but when they were doing the Hogan references, yeah, like because obviously Punk did one with the sarcastic, <laughs> and then Joe did one. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. So I was like, you know, I like that back and forth, mm-hmm. and why not make a nod to probably the biggest name that there ever has been in wrestling? But apparently, no. That's like, oh, you can't keep WWE out of your head. Like, okay, I guess. Yeah. Like, doesn't really work though, isn't it? When Hogan's been retired longer than anything, though. You know, he maybe he's just a legend in wrestling in general, but yeah. whatever. I mean, he was in WCW for a long time as well, so... Yeah. But now it's a WWE thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Punk gets the win, defends his real-world championship, so it would have been nice to see what happened off the back of that, but it looks like at uh, all else we won't be seeing that. Sadly, so. sadly. And I think, um, I don't know, I was expecting him to main event all out, to be honest with you, but... Yeah, me too. Mm. But we'll, we'll cover that when we do our all our predictions in a bit, because indeed, I made a graphic indeed. for it, so we'll talk about it. It's a fucking talk about it. Um... Then we followed up with a trio's action, the Golden Elite against Bullet Club Gold and Kester. Um Well, this was good as well. I it was actually... a good match. To be honest, like, I wasn't overly sold on this match because I feel like everything's kind of been put together. You know what I mean? Like, well, obviously every match is put together. That's kind of stupid. But you know what I mean? Like, mm. it was like, ah, oh, let's put these teams together and see what happens. And it all, I don't want to say rushed because we kind of had enough time, but... Something about it just wasn't selling it, but it was a lot better a match than I expected. Yeah, like, it fell thrown together, but obviously, it was, knowing Tony, it was very meticulously planned. I think these three may have teamed together at all, the original All-In. And that's so probably like where, that yeah. Large, but obviously, you've got Takesh to feud with Omega, then you've got Bullet Club Gold through their own thing, then they've kind of thrown them together, and Don Callis is in, it's like, what's actually going yeah. on? Um, and I get your point. Yeah, it just, I suppose that's the thing, it felt a little chaotic team-wise, but what ended up being a really enjoyable match so I can't really complain Yeah, but I just wasn't big on it going in you know what I mean no I, I, do you know what sounds awful I can't remember who won uh, Bullet Club Gold I think they might have done yeah. it I think I, I had the Golden Elite uh, or the Golden Lovers whatever they want to call themselves <laughs> um, as, uh, as winning it but yeah I was, I was surprised I was surprised by the outcome so um, yeah good yeah, match well, yeah it was a good match the fa- fans were really behind Kenny Omega which was which was interesting to yeah. see um, I think it's interesting the position, like the the star power, arguably in this match, the position on the card, and like I know we're just two fans, so I'm not speaking for everyone to say this, but like it doesn't really go down as your most memorable match of the night or anything like that, does it? You know, no, which it's good, serviceable, but yeah, it's, it's it's that it's the funny position of like second match on the card. So it's what Jericho lost his shit about when it was him and Kevin Owens. It's yeah. like that's the piss break or whatever he calls it. And it's like yeah. interesting position for it, but. Yeah, it's an interesting position for a piss. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, is that why they're called Bullet Club Gold? <laughs> maybe. maybe. Sorry. Um, and then we had tag team action, which many have said was match of the night. And I think you're hard pressed to maybe disagree. I mean, it was a fucking um, good match. It was a good match. I, I was. I must admit, I was. I was really glad of the outcome of this. Yeah, me too. Really um, glad. I think you had the Bucks winning, didn't you? And I was like, oh, they are going to win. Like I was trying to. I was trying to predict wise because I'm never on your fucking lists when you do your lists <laughs> our but, lists sorry don't, don't just disown it because you shit but um, <laughs> well, I, I kind of yeah I kind of wanted FCR to win this yeah um, it was very interesting the fact that the books didn't shake their hand at the end mm. part of me was wondering how my game of Qantas and all out I was like have they buried the hatchet now with Punk might we see CMFTR versus Hangman and the books yeah, and I mean, maybe not now. now we'll never know. With someone else is in the old yeah. Pez. Um, but now, 
you know, fantastic match from these. Clearly not the last match they're ever going to do. I think no. it's the right calls. Keep it on FTR. Um, so, yeah. Can't yeah. say you can What do you make of the Young Bucks entrance? It was funny, wasn't it? It was good. Yeah. Um, like, interesting that they've, uh, you know, they got, they got the rights to loads of songs, didn't they? I, he really invested in, I, I love when they use licensed music. And they really invested in some of it. And this was like a like a parody, wasn't it? So it wasn't yeah, yeah. really licensed music. But that, I don't know how it works. kick will knock you out. Whatever. Yeah. So. And I don't know how that works, whether you still have to pay some royalty when it's clearly uh, a reference to a real song. But I yeah. think there is some rules over parody, isn't it? It's that weird. I'll get away with it. But, um, I, I yeah, I thought the attire and the entrance, and it was the usual box level of swagger, wasn't it, to be fair? I thought <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, another fantastic match. We followed this up with, I thought this was a bit hectic, to be fair. Some <laughs> people seen, loved this, some hated it. Have you seen uh, the, the, I had to like it on Instagram before, and apologies because I can't remember who put it up. We've seen the meme going around of like the John Moxley AW diffuser. <laughs> the <laughs> sticks are sticking out of his head. <laughs> He's yeah. really fucking crazy. Crazy son of a bitch, that guy, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This one just didn't hit for me. I know a lot of people loved it. Um, I just thought it was a bit too chaotic. Yeah, they tried to stick with the action around the arena, but there wasn't that much going on around the arena. And then they had stuff. Just I don't know. Felt like they were just waiting to get the spots in, kind of thing. I think sometimes, sadly, when there's there's a match like this that has a lot of specific spots, mm. it kind of it runs the risk of being that where you go, let's move to the next spot and let's set up. And if it doesn't have that natural flow, you really notice it. And I'm not yeah. not. Uh, slagging the match off by any means but um, I do feel like you notice them like getting to the next spot quite a lot yeah, yeah. I think it, like you, you can't compare to the original stadium stampede as well like you know Sammy Guevara getting like gunned down by a fucking golf cart yeah like obviously they had, they had Sue showing up with like you know weapons in a car and all that and you know people pop for that but like the, the Penta thing was weird as well like people were legitimately concerned he was really injured the fact they took him out and then he just came back as like evil Penta and it was like oh. <laughs> you know I mean? like, fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It was a, it was an interesting one. I, again, I had Blackpool Combat Club winning this because they need to win something. Sometimes, yeah, they never seem to. Yeah. So plus the call Blackpool Combat Club and they were in the UK. Yeah, I know that was just an homage to Regal, but still, they should have got the win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he did not. So looks like we're getting Moxie versus Cassidy now for the international title. I think he's going to be the one to, to throw him. To be fair, mm. but we will see. We then followed this up, hometown girl. Uh, mixed reactions to this one. What were your thoughts? I enjoyed it. Um, for starters, I'm just going to say this, and I don't mean it in a negative way. I just want to try and say it in the right way that I'm glad that the Knight family were used, but I'm so glad that it weren't like a get your brother a match kind of God, approach. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like I we... love that they came out with her, and I love that they had that sort of like this is her house, this is her home kind of thing, and the Knight family were behind her. Like, I love the fact that it was done like, ah, we're behind you. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, we got you. Yeah. Um, I think it, it was just... So, I just want to start with It was that. as tasteful as they could have done it. It still annoyed me, because it should have been her moment to shine. Yeah. She, she never just gets that. You know what I mean? It's mm. like, because she's from a wrestling family. And, yeah. like, you can say the same about, like, Bret Hart and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, the amount of time his family oh, yeah. involved in his matches. But this was, uh, to be fair, like, I get your point, but I think this is as tasteful as they could have done it, because, yeah. you know, bear in mind, and the reason I, I wanted to mention it, and I'm not... Like, I know she loves her family and I'm not throwing shade at the night family at all, but like the look at the amount of like social media thing there was with Zach yeah. where he's like, Do you think I should have a match in AEW and stuff like that? It's like just yeah. like maybe maybe Well if, even in the in the post the, the post match uh, scrum thing, like it got brought up, didn't it? And basically they said that he's gonna come out for a couple of tryout matches or whatever with them in a couple of months. But it's like it's this there's riding coattails, then there's like fucking hell, just you know what I mean? Yeah. But Fair play to Soraya, obviously, you know, it is a wonderful wrestling family, like OGs of, of the UK game, and, mm. you know, Soraya has been the breakout star, she has had all the success, and, yeah. you know, for when you that family who owns a wrestling company and wants that success, you you know what I mean? She's yeah. probably the one. I don't think it's her family saying, get us on the card. No, Soraya's no. is probably doing it for a family. Yeah, yeah, in all fairness. For me, at the same time, I'm like, it would be nice if it was just her time. Yeah. To, to, to have but well, that being said I, th- I think absolute right choice decision wise here yeah. I thought the match was really good I like I weren't sure what they were going to do with the whole Tony Storm thing but I really like her character at the minute you know um, like it's different from what, what she's ever done before oh so yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite fascinating to me but yeah like the, the outcast seem to be completely fucking like imploded now haven't they like Ruby getting involved and basically mm. getting 
hitting and just storming off and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, do you think that is they're, they're going to split them, or do you think it's going to be like a they get the have it back in order kind of thing? Well, based on that, we're going to have a further match, aren't we? Now with well, Tony and Sarai, but I think so. Right, I think so. Um, I'm just gonna, I saw a graphic somewhere that somebody <laughs> it was probably made. Mine. Yeah. yeah, it was probably mine. Um, but yeah, I think um. Because I'd love to see a one-on-one match between the two of them I anyway. Would. I'm totally cool. And like Ruby's already taken on Statlander, so it's not like they need to make yeah. a triple threat, so you can yeah. still have it like that. See, that was another thing. I was like, are they going to do a thing where Soraya's got a belt and then Ruby gets the belt? And Tony really loses his shit, kind mm, of Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And yeah, and they turn on Tony. You, never know. you just never know. Um, so yeah, so I, I enjoyed it. Good um, shit. A lot of people didn't, but yeah, good for her, I think. Nah, quality. Um, we then got the copper match again. I don't know what it was about this. It just, um, I didn't love it, if I'm honest. Uh, I think you got to appreciate it for what it is, haven't you? Yeah. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Sting. Um, I really like Darby as well. Swerve was, was good. And Christian was good as well. But mm. I just, again, it was another one that felt a bit thrown together. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, although there is history between Sting and Christian, but it does feel kind of thrown together. Yeah. But um, I think I feel like the only real purpose for this match was to be like, look, UK, it's Sting. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's what this is for. And, that's, and I'm totally fine with that. That's what he deserves as well. Like, oh, yeah, without a doubt. Man. I love, like, the creativity of, like, um, with the bat stopping the casket from closing and stuff. Mm. But, like, they, you know, they had some good Yeah, little and, touches like that, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was good. But I just felt like, like, it started off so well. And then there was, like, really big high points. But then there was, like, a little bit of a lull. Um, I think. Um, mm. but we then went on to um the awesomeness that was Will Osprey and Jericho. Um, I think they made people fucking eat the words. I mean, people were not happy. I wasn't happy. I wanted Kenny Omega and Osprey. Yeah, you wanted a, a, a revisit. Um, yeah. How did you feel? I enjoyed it. You know, yeah. um, there was a couple of botches and stuff in there. Uh, but not too many that it kind of took away from it or anything, in my opinion. So. Mm. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great match. Um, Osprey's just next level, um, and Jericho deserves credit as well. I think the they had a lot of near falls. It was very exciting. There was points in there where I was like, "Fucking hell, Jericho's going over." I was fuming. So they they took me along for the ride. That, that's what you need yeah. to do. Well, exactly. Yeah. Wrestling. So how did I you was... feel about uh, Jericho's entrance? I mean, you know. It... <laughs> Fair play to him, you know what I mean? He wants to play Wembley. Why not play Wembley? You can do it, yeah. Um, when you're Chris Jericho, you can do those kind of things. But, but yeah, I felt like uh, it probably didn't need to happen, but it was okay. It wasn't the best rendition of uh, Judas I've ever heard in my life. But <laughs> yeah. um, I'm happy I mean, he played the right song. try and get his ass to the ring as well. So. Well, yeah. I'm happy they played the right song for Osprey this time as well, because that's a low key banger, that one, isn't it? His, um, his entrance music. Yes. So, um, he played the, the right wrong one, one on. The right one? Well, he played the wrong one on Dynamite. Oh, right. He was viewing. He was like, ah. oh, you know, fucking Wembley. <laughs> you know, play this fucking one. I yeah. didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. My so, bad. Um, but yeah, awesome. Made up for Osprey. Um, you know, probably the, the highlight of his career. Let's be honest. He's been in the Tokyo Dome. He's done all that kind of stuff. But it's mad because he's going to be a free agent soon. You kind of hope he's going to sign with AW, but he just doesn't give anything away about it, does he? No, he does not. I mean, he's still got obviously a missus and you know a stepchild at home. I don't think Tony makes you get rid of them. So, no. But <laughs> did they want to move? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that the, the, the luxury he's got at the minute with like New Japan and stuff is he can just I think that's some there, of the stuff Davidson. he said, hasn't it? He's kind of expressed that like he's got that freedom now. That's why he never goes Italy. to WWE. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause just... So getting tied to another big company is yeah. admittedly not as big as WWE, but it, it probably has the same attractions, especially when he can wrestle for them. Well, yeah. Like clearly. When he wants. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a great match and I made a boss got the win as well. Indeed. Um, and again, uh, I wasn't expecting this, you know. You... I, I mean, I was fully expecting Billy Gunn to retire the other week, so like yeah. that, that threw me that he, he just hasn't, and now he's, he's back and he's a trio he's champ. belt and stuff. Um, Ledge. Yeah, I didn't see it coming, to be fair. I thought it was a way to give Billy one final hurrah, but in front of like 81,000 people. Um, but yeah, Daddy, um, Daddy well, uh, badass Billy Gunn um, was back, not Daddy ass. Um, so yeah, loved it, made up for the acclaimed. I feel like they were so over and so hot at one point. And again, they've just kind of been off the boil for a while. So mm. it's nice to see them get back. Hopefully, we see, we see more of them. What do you think of Max's uh, entrance? <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. good little rap. Like his uh, Prince Andrew reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Risky, but um, mm. yeah. I was in attendance. But, uh, Clearly loved it. You know what? Like, fair play. It was a quality match. I, like, I love House of Black, and I, I really can't wait to see where they're going. I also want to sort of make notes of their homage to Bray as well. Yeah. I thought it was lovely. 
yeah, subtle awesome. and lovely. Yeah, um, it was nice to see Julia getting um, some exposure as well um, in the match. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. I think we should reference in the uh, the finish there. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm glad that she was able to be a part of it and get in the ring and you know. Yeah. Get I think she's stuff. like she's really developed as a character with House of Black, hasn't she? Yeah, definitely. Which takes us to the main event, and again, colour me surprised because I very much was. Um, you know, Adam Cole started being very heelish. MJ, like, I love the fact there was still a bit of banter between them and stuff like that, yeah. and we were like kind of one up on each other, but in a jokey way. And then it got a bit serious, and then like when they hit the double pin, mm. and I was like, "Fucking hell!" Like, surely, surely they won't end it on a draw. Um, then obviously, I, I just think it was so well planned. There was throwbacks to. Oh yeah. Everything through the the feud they've had, like the call back to the five more minutes and all that. Um, I'm just the more this has gone on, the more convinced I am now that it probably is going to be MJF uh, turning on Adam. You know, you think so? I think because they keep hinting at and referencing the fact that Adam Cole's going to hate him. Mm. I feel like it's almost too obvious now if he does turn on him. I think it probably is going to be the devil, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. That's the only thing I'll say about it. Like, I absolutely love the match, <clears throat> love the chemistry between these two. I even love them as a team. And at some point, it has to stop and it has to go back to like enemies, I guess. Yeah. Like, it feels like the natural conclusion to this friendship. And I'm utterly convinced now it's going to be MJF at like just some random opportune moments. Well, we, we, we're clearly getting some kind of thing with um, Roderick Strong and the kingdom, aren't we? Yeah. And I feel like. I don't know whether he's anywhere near close to healing or whatever, but you think Kyle O'Reilly might get put in the mix at some point as well. Mm. So it's like, what do you do? Do you have MJF turn on Cole join the kingdom and with Roddy as well or something and then have um, fucking stupid face come back and join up with Adam Cole again? Or Well, my suggestion would be that Roddy potentially, because he can't convince Adam, tries to maybe show Adam by trying to win MJF over. And then it basically inevitably leads to their friendship staying strong. So you end up with Kyle O'Reilly and Roddy against them two for the belts, maybe. And you have that little feud for a while. Yeah, that could work. I think there's there's mileage there. There's definitely yeah. some mileage there. I can't like, I mean, MJF's great at everything he does, but it's it's weird but also kind of nice seeing him as, as a baby face as well. He's like still kind of a heelish baby face. Did you catch the media scrum afterwards? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, he was a much more delightful MJF than he has been in previous media scrums, but he was still throwing shade as much as he could. Oh, God, yeah. So yeah. you go, he's still MJF in there. What's it? He's, um, he's, he's everybody's... Uh, and um, their bag, whatever he calls himself. Slightly un- unrelated, but I believe... Um, Looking at SGO Vintage on Instagram, she did his jacket, did she? Did she? Oh, By the looks awesome. of it, yeah. Well, I love Sandra. Yeah. Um, nice to see that like they're still saying people she does stuff for. I think yeah. that's awesome. And that, you know, based on all accounts, not to ruin you know kayfabe and all that, but MJF and Sandra proper like you know they love each other, don't they? They love working together and stuff. So it's nice that yeah. obviously he's still enlisting her services for yeah. stuff like that. I reckon uh, when it comes to sewing, she's like, I'm better than you. <laughs> Fucking yeah, she should be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Um, you know, they've also announced they're coming back next year as well, same bank holiday weekend. So mm. I might try and go to it. Come on an sure. annual thing, maybe. Yeah, well, that, yeah. that's the plan. So they're doing all out every Labor Day weekend in America, um, in Chicago, and they want to do the same with Wembley every every bank That'd holiday. That'd be fucking weekend, awesome. So, it, um, it would. It was a bit of a tradition and stuff. So. Um, have to see whether people continue to pay every year or what happens with that. But I think, I think <clears throat> different people will rock up, won't they? You didn't make this year's, so you're definitely gonna try and make next year's and so on. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. you've got those people who just go to everything whenever they can. Yeah. Like, apparently, people came from seventy countries. Lots of people Damn. came from America to watch it. And it's like, and it's mad. It's like finally over in this country, and you got Americans following it. I know. Which is fine, but yeah. madness. And people are like, well, they still can't sell out four thousand seats. It's like, well. They fucking sold 81, didn't they? So. That'd be like us having the dedication enough to go over to America and watch it. No, oh God. We can't even fucking... Like, if, eh, it seems a bit If fun. they were in Liverpool, we'd be like... <laughs> it's like, but I'm warm. <laughs> yeah. It's what happens when you get older. But I'm cosy. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. thought it was great. Um, loved pretty much every single match. Um, it was 1999, well spent. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed the whole damn thing. Indeed. So let us know what was your favorite match. Is there anything that you know didn't hit for you? Then let us know in the comments. Um, if you're listening, 
then you can also leave your comments on um, social <laughs> medias. You listen and just keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> you can also leave. Um, but no, do let us know on our social accounts as well. Um, and make sure you give us a five-star review. We appreciate that. And um, to our YouTubers out there, um, thanks for 5K. Thanks for 2 million views. Hit the like. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, leave a comment on there. Let us know your thoughts. And we will catch you on the next one.